Uh, you're very welcome to your Yin class. This is class number six, two weeks done. So in our last Yin class, we did a lot of forward folds. So today we're going to go the opposite way with some back bends, but we are going to start with a forward fold. Um, apologies in advance if there's any background noise as I forgot to put the dog in the kitchen and now she's wandering around the house getting up to no good. But that's okay, we're going to be doing puppy pose. So let's take a minute or two to get ourselves settled. So come over to your mat if you're not already there. Let's just come to any comfortable seat. If you happen to have a cushion, a block, doesn't have to be a meditation cushion, but just one off your couch, maybe sit on that. Get yourself some height and it helps to encourage the knees down towards the earth. It's taking a few breaths to settle here. If you want to exhale loudly through the mouth, feel free, let all that tension go, inhaling and exhale. Inhale. Take one more inhale and exhale. The eyes closed, taking a few seconds to, just a few seconds to ourselves, taking some time to just be and not do. Getting ourselves used to being still sometimes. If you find you a little bit fidgety, that's absolutely okay. Get it all out now. If you've got like weird scratches, little things in the room distracting you. Get it all out of your system now. Take three more deep breaths, inhaling and exhaling. Inhale. Last one. And exhaling. So drop the hands forward if you're using, if you're wearing on a block or a cushion, just move it aside. We're going to be alternating between dangle and squat. So dangle is the only standing pose in the practice of yin. So we're doing that. We're alternating between dangle and squat twice, and then we get to lie down for the rest of the class. So if you're someone who likes to come down onto a block or a prop for your squat, then you're going to leave your prop where you're going to be bringing that butt down. So for instance, if I was using this, I'd have my back to it now. So just come onto your feet, drop your fingertips down onto the floor, and we're coming into a forward fold, Uttanasana, and in yin it's called dangling. So the poses have three names, just to add to the complication. So basically we're straightening up the legs, hanging the head forward. So bend the legs as much as you want to, especially on this first one. Right, bend them as much as you need. Actually place your chest onto your thighs if you want to. Maybe tying up the hair. And allow the hands to drop onto the mat. You might be able to push in with the fingertips, press into all four corners of the feet, straighten the legs a little bit and drop the head. You can stay like this and move your hands onto your elbows. And really do what it says in the tin here, dangle. Take gentle rocks if you like, maybe gentle bounces, or just let gravity gradually pull you down. If you'd like to close down the eyes, feel free. Really settle into the pose. Just here for one more minute and then we'll move to our squat. So our feet are a couple of inches apart, holding onto the elbows, sinking down. Send the crown of the head down towards the mat, even if it's not physically, just energetically dropping down. Into the last 30 seconds. Usually the end of a pose is the most challenging and that's where the pose really begins. Start to straighten up the legs a little bit more now so you're moving away from the floor. Release the elbows, drop the fingertips down. Let's move the feet further apart. Turn the toes outwards, so pointing the feet outwards. And then when you're ready, sit down, eye down to an invisible prop, 
or onto your actual prop. So coming down into a squat. So our feet are fully connected to the mat. If our heels have lifted up, then come back up in your squat. You're only coming down as far as you can while keeping your feet down. But use your cushions, use a block, use whatever you have in the room. Press the hands together to push the biceps into the legs. 90 seconds to go. Look forward. Broad across the collarbone. Press the hands together to help hold your balance. Make sure all four corners of your feet, the full surface of your feet are on the mat. Visualize your tailbone or your root chakra or both being rooted downwards or pointing downwards towards the mat. into the last few seconds and then release the hands down take your time release the hands down rock forward with your knees and then push back up into the dangle so you need to bring the feet closer together for the dangle so move the feet closer together fingertips onto the mat in front of the feet drop the head down and same thing again here rooting down through both Feet all four corners, full surface of the feet. Let's grab the elbows. Let gravity do the work. Let gravity pull that crown or that crown chakra down towards the mat. Keep breathing, not holding the breath. Bend the knees as much as you want to here. Don't worry too much about how much sensation once there is sensation. One minute to go here, and then we take our final squat. Tune in to the breath, slow down the breath. Just follow each and every breath, follow the trail from the start of the inhale to the end of the exhale. The last 30 seconds. Notice what sensations you can feel in the body. Notice what thoughts are arising here. Staying with the breath all the way to the end. So really slowly we're transitioning into our squat. So drop the hands down, releasing from the elbows. Bring the fingertips to the floor, move the feet apart toes pointed outwards and then start to sit down send the hips down bring the palms the hands together so sitting down on your prop again if you want to really broad across the chest the collarbone lifting up with that upper body looking forward shine the heart forward we're on the home stretch Check in with the breath. If it's becoming shallow, pull back in your squat. Check with the feet. Are the toes lifting away? Press them down. Use the toes as well to help you grip. Almost at the end. And then we get to take our first little resonance, our rebound. So if you're close enough to the floor that you're able to drop back, or if you want to remove your prop and then drop back, or if you want to help yourself down, whatever way you're making your way down, and then extend the legs out in front. Make sure there's nothing in your way behind you now. And lie down. Just a one minute rebound here. So you're coming into a Shavasana pose, basically. Arms down by your side, palms up. Toes flapping away from each other. Close down the eyes and notice what you're feeling here. Notice the difference in sensation in the lower body than when you pressed play. And allow yourself to be fully supported by the mass melting down. Melting deeper and deeper. Well, it's just a short one, so let's bend the left leg, 
Roll onto the right hand side and roll yourself all the way over onto your tummy. Bring the hands either side of the chest and push yourself back up to a tabletop. So we're coming into puppy pose, also known as melting heart. So back bends are also chest or heart openers. So it's the same thing. So we'll set ourselves up here. So we want the knees to be hip distance apart and directly under the hips. If you can see yourself on your screen or got a mirror there, or even just looking down. So our hips are really as, as wide as we think in our head. So maybe moving the knees a couple of millimeters towards each other gets it just right. And we're starting off with the wrists underneath the shoulders. If you would like to use that same prop here for melting heart, maybe have the props to hand. And then we'll walk the hands forward, walking the hands all the way up to the top of the mat. And as we walk the hands, we start to sink the chest down, as in the melting heart, sinking the chest and then bringing the forehead down to the mat. If the forehead is not reaching comfortably to the floor, use a prop for your forehead. Or even, it might be reaching down, but you just might feel like prepping today, just bringing the floor up to you, and that's absolutely fine. So our hips are up in the air, melting the heart. A little back bend. Close down the eyes. Let's focus in on the breath and just notice are we able to maintain long, calm breaths here? With every exhale, we're sinking down towards the mass. And energetically, if it helps to visualize that heart space, the heart chakra, green spinning lights in the chest, Bring that green spinning light down towards the mat. We're halfway through this pose. If you haven't been using a prop so far, but now you think you'd like to, don't be afraid to adjust. Another way you can do it is by using the prop underneath the hands and then sinking down. Much more intense on the shoulders. Stay with the breath. Allow yourself to melt down towards the floor. Coming into the last minute and then we'll take a really short rebound before our next pose. So lift the head away from the mat, rock forward, shift the hips forward, make sure there's no props on your mat, bring the knees back, slide the knees back and come to lying on your belly. So we're taking our resonance here on our bellies, one hand on top of the other to make a little pillow. Bring the forehead down and relax, turn the toes in towards each other, allow yourself to melt down and relax. Enjoying any sensations and release.
When you're ready, then let's move the head away from the hands, push the hands into the mat, lift yourself up, bring your hands, bring your forearms actually a little bit further forward than your chest. So your elbows a little bit further forward than your chest and the arms are in front of you on the mat. So we're coming into Sphinx pose, which is a little bit like Cobra, only that we're not coming up quite as far. So for now, leave your chest on the mat, make sure the hands are in the right position. Fingers spread wide. And as we lift up in the Sphinx, move your elbows a little bit back towards you to get that height in the upper, in the upper body and therefore the back bend. So check in with how the spine feels, especially the lower lumbar area. If it's any discomfort, any pinching, move the feet further apart. Experiment with how far apart, maybe really far apart. See if that relieves any tension in the lower back. And if so, then stay like that. So there's no obligation to have the feet quite close to each other if it's uncomfortable. So looking forward, lifting the chest, broad across the collarbones. The abdomen is resting on the mass. In a vinyasa class, you'd I'd say suck it in, put for you in and we're going to be here for a few minutes and then it drop down. So all the movement is coming from the back bend and the heart opener. Stay with the breath here, bring the focus to the breath. Two more minutes and then a minute of rebound. Bring your focus to your legs, relax them down, release them down. Let the knees rest on the mat, the front of the toes resting. Soften and relaxing the pelvis down onto the mass. The belly is resting on the mass. As we're in the last 90 seconds, let's push a little bit away from the mat with the hands, with the arms, lifting our upper bodies up just a fraction more. Make sure the shoulders are away from the ears. into the last minutes. Notice what thoughts are popping up in the head, what feelings, what emotions, what conversations you're having with yourself. You notice them, observe them, and then let them go. Bring the focus back to the breath for the last 30 seconds. We're taking some of those 30 seconds to make our way slowly and carefully out of the pose. So start by softening the ribs down, softening the chest down. Move the elbows apart and bring the chest down onto the mat really slowly, one vertebra at a time. Make that little pillow with the hands again, one on top of the other, and then turn your head to the left so that your right temple rests on that pillow. Turn your toes in towards each other. Take a sigh. Melting down. Staying in a resonance, but turning the head now slowly and carefully. 
that you're placing your other tap boot down just for balance and turn the head both ways. And melting down onto the mat. It feels good to bring some gentle movement, maybe gently moving the hips from side to side, and then settling into stillness for the last few seconds. Let's turn the head, the forehead is down. And then lift the head away from your arms, come up onto your elbows, just so I can show you the next pose. So the next pose is called seal. It's not that dissimilar to sphinx, except that the arms are in a different position. You have an option here of adding in an extra, something extra, which is a quad stretch. The quad is the front of the thigh, as you probably know. So it's completely optional. But if you had done your vinyasa yesterday or you're in the gym, I know some of you go to the gym as well, maybe a nice quad stretch would be useful as well. So to get ready for our seal, bring in the hands to the top corners of your mat. And then when you're ready, you're going to push, push into those hands and bring that upper body up. So the arms are straight here, slightly turn the hands so that the right hand is pointing to the right, the left hand is pointing to the left. It's supposed to look a little bit like a seal's face. So we'll just stay like this for now. And then if you want to add the quad stretch. So we need to feel really secure doing this on one hand to add the, the quad stretch. So if you want to, shift some weight into the right hand and then lean back with the left. Bring that left foot up towards your glute and grab the foot. So you're staying looking forward though. So we're not looking over this left shoulder. We're looking forward, pushing that right hand into the mat to get that back bend from the seal. It is a loss. You don't have to stay with the quad stretch for the whole thing, even if you are doing it. Even if we do, say, 15 more seconds, and then we'll come back to our seal. And release that back foot, bring the left hand back where it was, coming back into our full seal. Really push the mat away with the hands, pushing that upper body away from the floor, shoulders away from the ears. Again, let's check in with the lower back. We need to move the feet further apart, we can. And then if you want to take the quad stretch on the other side, shift that upper body weight, some of that upper body weight into the left hand. Reach back with the right hand, bend that leg, grab the foot. So looking forward though, not looking over the shoulder, keeping it looking forward. So sort of pushing that left hand away, the man away with the left hand. Holding here for 15 seconds. You can stay for longer if you wish. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm releasing the leg. I'm coming back to full seal. We're nearly there. Really push the matter away. If you can see yourself in your device or in your mirror, watch your tummy and your chest moving away from the floor into our last 30 seconds. Let me close down the eyes, connect with the breath. So really slowly now, 
starting to bring the upper body down towards the mat. So stretch the arms out even further as we bring in the ribs, belly, the chest really slowly. And then making that pillow with the hands, bring the forehead down, relax everything. Roll the ankles outwards, the toes pointing in. And relax. Our last pose is going to be also a back bend, but much more, much more gentle and a little bit more restorative in nature. For now, stay with this resonance for another full minute. Just noticing what sensations you can feel in the body. So lift the head away from the hands, bring the hands to either side of the chest, point the toes. We're just going to take a quick cobra, really just to transition back to a seat. So hands are beside your chest, point the toes, push the pelvis down into the mat. And then when you're ready, looking forward, lifting up to cobra, bend the knees, send the hips back, take a quick child's pose. Without even moving the knees, just bring the hips back towards the heels. And then rocking forward, make your way to a seat. If you have water here, grab a drink now. Take a second to catch the breath. Make any little movements that you want to make. You might want to move the head or the hips. Everybody's different here. So move around, stretch. Have a drink, and then we're coming into our last pose, which, as I said, is a back bend, but really more gentle and restorative. So, what it is is a um, a, a supported badakanasana, the bound angle. So, if you hadn't been using props up to now, just pause, grab a pillow off your bed, a cushion off your couch, anything. If you happen, if you're lucky enough to have a yoga bolster, the yoga bolster is perfect. But I don't expect you to have one. So what we're trying to do is elevate the upper body a little bit, and that's going to give us the openness and the heart opening and this, the gentle supported back bend. So I'll just show you with the bolster. You can improvise with whatever you have. I even have um, the cushion off my egg chair for my garden here. It's in for the winter. So you could use something like that even. So if you're not familiar with that, it's also called butterfly in yin and it's where you bring the soles of the feet together and you drop the knees out to the side so with yin and restorative feel free to prop the knees in this pose anyway so if you have blocks you can always prop them and then we, as we want to be a little bit elevated either getting your bolster your cushion your pillow whatever you have and lying back on it so even if you're on your pillow and you're much closer to the ground that's okay it's even a slight elevation absolutely fine roll the shoulders down and back so you're getting that chest heart opening here and then depending how high you are away from the floor will help with getting the chest open the shoulders down and back arms down by your side palms up if this feels very vulnerable and it can feel very vulnerable heart openers can be bring your hands onto your body so a nice one is left hand on the chest right hand on the belly. Also a hip opener because of what's going on down here. So there is a lot going on and this is our last pose. So once you're, once you've found how this looks for you today, both in your body and how you're propping, close down the eyes. Bring the focus to the breath. 
And as you exhale, allow yourself to trust that prop, trust the mat, trust the earth, that you're supported. No need to hold on, you can release a little bit here. And if you do have your left hand on your chest, start to tune in to your heartbeat. If you haven't propped the lower body and you can feel a lot of sensation in the hips, that's okay. We do want to find some sensation here for our yin practice. And no sensation at all would be restorative. So check in with that sensation. Notice what feelings arise. What thoughts are you having? Are you starting to have a dialogue with yourself where you want to come out of the pose, you're conflicted? Can you let all those thoughts be, but then float away and come back to the breath? If you do have your hands on your body, perhaps as you start to feel more comfortable, the hands slide down to the floor, perhaps for the final few moments. Relax the hands, allow the fingers to curl. Allow yourself to sink down onto your props, onto the mat. Fully supported and safe. Last couple of seconds here, stay with it. Really slowly and carefully. We're going to take our time coming out of this pose. There's a lot of opening going on. So let's start by bringing the legs in towards each other. Slowly bringing them in so that they touch. Walk the feet maybe a little bit closer to the glutes. So depending how far away you are from the floor here, it might be good to turn the hands over, bring them closer to the body, and slowly, carefully, be careful with that neck. Push yourself up, push into the hands, and come up to a seat. Let's move aside whatever you had. Lie down on the back and hug your knees into your chest. Take rocks in and out. And maybe taking some rocks from side to side. And we're coming into Shavasana, which also counts as our rebound from that last pose. So let the feet Float down to the floor, extend out the legs. If you were using a bolster, a pillow or a cushion, you might as well use it for Shavasana, for a little treat. So underneath the knees is my favorite. You also put something underneath your head, your neck. Throw a throw over yourself if you can. Always staying longer in Shavasana if you have time depending on the time of the day as well that you're doing this, it might determine whether you have time to stay a bit longer. Bring the arms down by your side. Once you've found your Shavasana, settle into complete stillness. 
so important, especially after yin. Because we've worked the connective tissues, the fascia. And with all the back bending, we've done a lot for the spine, for the discs in between the vertebrae. So we need to let them rest, let them integrate the benefits before we rush off into our day. Softening in the face. Release the jaw, part the lips. Check in with the eyebrows, are we frowning? Soften, gentle smile on the face and allow the whole body to relax. Allow the body to melt deeper and deeper. Bring your focus to your feet. Relax the toes, relax the feet, relax the ankles. Moving up to the legs, Resting and relaxing those lower legs, the knees and the thighs. So if they are resting on a pillow, allow them to melt down even more, even deeper. Soften through the hips and the glutes. Relaxing and resting. Bring the focus to the lower back, the middle back and the upper back. Resting and rejuvenating and stronger for having done this practice. Softening the pelvic area. Relaxing the abdominal area as we're in a rest and digest. Softening, relaxing the ribs, just a gentle movement with the breath. Softening into the chest, the heart, the space area that we've opened, we've rebalanced. Ready to receive all of the unconditional love, empathy, and compassion that's in the world for us. Relaxing the fingertips, the hands, the wrists, the lower arms, the elbows, the upper arms, and the shoulders, shoulders down, back, and relax. Whole body is relaxed. As we're into the last minute of Shavasana to keep this class to 40 minutes. If you can stay longer, stay longer. But I want you to stay in Shavasana all the way to the end of our time together. There's no need to come out of it. There's no need to come back up to a seat to close the class. Stay as you are. Visualize that prana that you're breathing in, that life force being delivered to every cell, every bit of tissue that we've worked and the ones that we haven't worked, every cell of the body, making you stronger and rejuvenated. I'm going to leave you here in Shavasana with your breath. And I shall see you soon at the next class. 
Thank you so much for joining me. Thank yourself as well. And namaste.